Great. Welcome, everyone. My name is Anthony Monta. I'm the Associate Director of the Nanovic Institute for European Studies. Um, this year, we're pleased to announce a couple of innovations in our film series. Uh, first, we've moved to a semester format to make uh, things a little more flexible, give us some, a chance to respond to some current things happening in cinema. And we've also, this semester, uh, enjoyed the input of our first guest programmer and curator of the film series for this semester, Ms. Leslie, Leslie Udwin. The title of this semester's series is Europe Beyond Borders, for reasons which are going to become clear uh, this evening. But let me just say a few words about our, our guest programmer. Leslie Udwin is very well known and happily well known to us at the Nanovic Institute. She started as an actress, appearing in TV shows since 1980. Her first acting role was in a film about uh, her, was playing the Turkish wife of a political prisoner. She then battled lots of nasty landlords, made a docudrama about this, something about which many of us can sympathize. I, I'm actually going to talk to you about this because I have a great idea for a film. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> and she's obviously interested in conflict, as all good storytellers are. And she, so she went on to make a TV drama called Who Bombed Birmingham? about pub bombings in 1974 which killed 21 people, injured many others, and the prosecution was speaking very controversial, and um, the case collapsed. So this sounds like a terribly interesting film as well. In 1999, she produced her first feature film, East is East, which I'm sure many of you know about. This was written by Ayub Khan Din, directed by Damien O'Donnell in his debut as a director, and started, starred Am Bari and Archie Punjabi. And this was a great homespun success. And with a $1.9 million budget, apparently, it grows $10 million in the UK, $4 million in the US, all across Europe, made more money, and made $12.3 million in UK rentals alone. It won 25 international awards, including British Film of the Year, as did um, Condon for his script and O'Donnell for his direction. So as you can well imagine, Leslie won the London Critics Circle Award for British Producer of the Year in 2000. In 2002, she produced The One and Only, a remake of Suzanne Beer's 1999 Danish film. We're going to show two of Suzanne Beer's films later this semester, uh, so please keep in touch with us about that. Five years later, in 2007, Mrs. Ratcliffe's Revolution occurred. This is a delightful film that we screened in 2008 in its U.S. premiere, again with Leslie here. And it was di uh, directed by Billy Eltringham and starred Catherine Tate, who was a well-known comedic actress in, in the UK. This had a limited release, but we love, and we have to mention this, we love the promotional line for this film. She left the land of Marks and Spencer, which is a, a, uh, a department store chain in the UK, for the land of Marks and Lenin. <laughs> and of course, we love Leslie because she combines a, a real sincere passion for important stories with the generosity of heart and very sort of outspoken producers uh, savvy about what it takes to make and show films like this these days, which is getting rather difficult. Uh, so you're actually very lucky to be able to see this film in the United States tonight um, and lucky to have the opportunity to hear from uh, Leslie Edwin. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm always so happy to say Please welcome Leslie Edlin. Thank you so much and good evening. And as I always say with this family of films, uh, Namaste and Salam Alaikum. Um, it's thrilling to be back here. I think this is my, Jim, is it my third time or my fourth time? It feels like my 24th time. Um, I mean, it really, really is like coming back to a family, uh, not just because of the warmth of the welcome and hospitality each time, but very particularly, and this moves me every time I come back to uh, the Nanavik in particular, and of course Notre Dame, um, or Notre Dame, um, uh, it's that I share the same values and... and I'm so thrilled and admiring and um, pleased every time to, to see that there, there are uh, hearts that beat and look outside um, of 
this country, as each country should, that look outside and try to understand and, uh, and tolerate um, the differences between us and our neighboring countries or even countries very far away from us um, in, in this world that is increasingly um, a global village. Um, I'm going to give a very, very brief introduction to East is East. I urge you, please, if you possibly can, to stay the whole marathon course. Um, this is somewhat of an experiment, I believe, doing a double bill, and it was my crazy idea. <laughs> so please, if you can, stay, because there is so much I long to say about both of these films, and it's not right or fair that I should say them in advance of you seeing the films, because I don't want to lead you by the nose or preempt any of your reactions. I would love the films to speak for themselves, but I would love to talk about them afterwards. So if you can have a late night tonight, please stay. Um, see both films. I promise you, you will love the second one um, too. And, um, and, and let's have a, a really good um, and valuable discussion after West is West. Um, very briefly, I'll just tell you how I encountered this family of films. In 1996, approximately, um, a writer called Ayu Khan Din, sorry, he wasn't even a writer then, he was an actor, a would-be writer called Ayu Khan Din, whose father uh, was a Pakistani who had come to England as a migrant labourer, as, as an immigrant who uh, wanted to make money uh, and send it back home to his wife and two daughters in Pakistan. But he fell in love with a bus conductress in the north of England, um, a woman called Ella, who was a Salford working class white woman. They got married in the early 50s, and Ella was actually, and, and this is the writer's real family history, um, uh, Ella was abused on the streets. Uh, George Khan, her husband, was the only um, Asian man, not just on that street, but in Salford. <laughs> um, and she was called whore. She had whore shouted at her as she walked down the street with her arm linked in her husband's arm. Um, I went to a play reading of this uh, a very early incarnation of East is East. Um, the writer had invited me and, and wanted me to come and tell him if I thought there was any future in it as a film or a TV film. And I fell head over heels in love with the spirit of this, at that time, quite underdeveloped, but nonetheless, you know, the, the, the recognition that I, as a Jew born in Israel, absolutely nothing to do with Pakistan, not even a great deal to do with England, except I had chosen to live there, but I'm not from there, um, completely and utterly recognised this as my story and recognised George Khan in all his fanatic, tyrannical insistence on Muslim tradition, I completely recognised him as my father. Um, you know, Jewish Mike Adwin. <laughs> and I knew that this was a crucially important film, uh, a film that dealt with uh, the whole question of identity, cultural identity, um, tolerance, understanding, and it was a huge battle to get this film funded back in 1998. Um, mercifully, it was a massive success. It paved the way for films like Bend It Like Beckham and Monsoon Wedding, and because it was the very first time that a film uh, that was Asian-themed, I know when you guys say Asian, you, you also mean Chinese, and when we say Asian, I think we mean South Asian, do we? We mean Indian Pakistani when we say Asian in, in, in England or in Europe. But anyway, it was the first Asian-themed film for us um, that dealt with incredibly you know, serious subjects of 
cross-culture and, and diversity, um, which made it to a multiplex audience and actually beat The Blair Witch Project and The Sixth Sense, which were the competing <coughs> films released in that same year. Um, and Anthony has, uh, you know, kind of mentioned 36 awards worldwide and $48 million box office, theatrical box office worldwide, and did incredibly well. I'm going to be quiet now because, you know, as you can see, I could go on forever. Um, let's please, you know, talk, talk after both films. There will be a break in between the two. Huge thank you to Jim McAdams and Anthony Monta and Ted Barron for their passion for independent film and independent filmmakers, um, a breed that's greatly under threat these days. I really hope you'll enjoy the films and see you later, I hope. <laughs>